Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I want to present you in the shortest time possible how you can export G-codes from Fusion 360. But to understand better, let's start first of all to make an easy and quick model. In order to do that, let's click here at create sketch, select this plan for example, and let's create a rectangle, two point rectangle, and now select this option, center rectangle, to start exactly from center. First dimension, it will be 200 tab 100 units. This is just an example. Now let's repeat it. So go again, two point rectangle, select center rectangle and select here and write 150 tab 75 units and then press enter. Go here at the top plan, switch the drawing, rotate it and let's create some little arches. In order to do that, go here at fillet, the command that is still active, so we will do more of them. Okay, and inside of it we will create a circle. So go here, center diameter circle, starting from this point, and the diameter will be 50 units, in our case millimeters. Finish the sketch, press the home button, and now let's extrude it. So go to the extrude, select this surface, drag a little bit this arrow, or you can write directly 20 units. I want also to use the interior part, but to do that, I will go here at sketches and I will make it visible. Go to the extrude again, select this surface, write 10 units for this time, and go again to the extrude and the interior part will write also 20. Now disable the sketch, and our piece is ready to go. If you are fine with this model and you want to introduce it on your CNC machine or 3D printer, you must go here and change the design tab into the manufacturer. And here it will appear another menu with another options. But first of all, let's create a new setup. In order to do that, click here at the setup tab and go to setup. I cannot select now the machine because I have not a machine here in my studio, but I will go here the operation. Operation, it will be milling, Okay, and now the orientation. Select here, select X, Y axis, because I want to change them. So the first one, it will be the X axis. For example, this one. If you don't like it, you see it, it is in this direction. If you don't like it, you can select here, flip X axis, and it will be in the other side. But I will let it like this. Now, Y axis, click here at nothing, and select this one. And I don't like to be in that side, so I will go to flip. The Z axis, it is fine. And the origin now, let's change it. But let's change it here, model box point. So this option generate automatically another box which includes our drawing. For example, let me show you. The box is slightly bigger than our model. We will select for our example, this point, for example. Okay, and now if everything is fine, go to okay. Click the home button again. And now we are going to make the toolpath. So in order to do that, go here at 2D tab, 2D pocket, because we will create actually a pocket. The tool, we go with tool and we have a bunch of options. As you see here, ball and mill, bald nose and mill, flat and mill, face mill, tapid mill, radius mill, and so on. So you will select basically what you need or what you have. But in my example for today, I will select the flat and mill because it is one of the most commonly used. After selecting it, let's go here to the Fusion 360 library and I'm able to choose which one I need or I have. Let's select in our case for today, the one with diameter of five millimeters. Click on it and it will appear down here many other options. For example, the material that we have, for example, aluminum, brass, copper, low carbon steel, and so on. The spindle speed, for example, rotation per minute, the surface speed, the cutting, feed rate, and so on. So well, let's say this one, it is our case. So double click on it or go to the select. And now it appear our tool. After that, we have here coolant, but for today's example, we will disable it because I don't want any coolant for today. And here we have a bunch of numbers. These numbers depend on the spindle, on your machine, your stock, so they will depend on anything basically. And if you put the mouse here, you can see for each of those which is the specific role. After that, we have here on the second tab, the tab of geometry, we will select now the part of the model that we want to curve. So in our case, this one it will be. And I will let those ones uncheck. If you're curious what are they all about, just hold the mouse here and it will appear a lot of information about every single them. In the third tab, the tab of heights, we have here three heights. So the first one, it will be the top, 
then it will be the feed and it will be the clearance. Usually I leave this as it is, so no change for this. In a fourth tab, the pass, we need to modify here sideways compensation. I will put it in the right side because the right side it is for conventional milling. Then I will uncheck the stock to leave and I will click here on multiple depths. So to have not one, to have many depths. And here I will delete everything and I'll write 0.5 millimeters. Then in the last one, on linking tab, you can see how the tool will operate between different G codes. And let's go here to the ramp. So here, if you're holding the mouse here, we are able to see a lot of ways how we can curve into our model. For example, the helix, the profile, the zigzag, the plunge, and so on. But for our case, I will let the helix. So in this way, our tool will go down into our stock here. And automatically, after I press OK, the Fusion 360 program will calculate the toolpath. And then I will press OK. And now, in order to see better, I will go here, so right click and go to Simulate. And here it will appear another window and we can see the entire process that it will happen. Let this box checked, stock, and here you see we have a start button. And from here we can increase or decrease the speed. Let me show you. So I will press play. And I will can decrease the speed or I can increase it, it's up to me. How fast I want to see the process or how slowly I want to do. And in this time, of course, I can move the drawing, I can switch it to be 100% clear what it will do. Good, if everything seems to be fine, I'll press close. If you're happy with this simulation or with this toolpath, go here, right click and go to the post process. Here it will appear another window where we have, for example, post processor, you have program number. Usually here you can write the name. So let's write here design one or better you can write pocket because it is a pocket operation. Now write five millimeters tool, for example. Now the units are already preset and I'll press OK. And now we are able to save where we need. Then I'll press the save button. And this is how you can export the G code and how you can generate the toolpath in Fusion 360. I hope this tutorial helped you. If you have questions, don't hesitate to let them in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and see you next time.